You're watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 from Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by Heather Kirksey of the Linux Foundation. Heather, good to see you again. Great to see you again too. Um, what's the current status of, of OPNFV? Because we've been talking about OPNFV with you for, for, yeah. for some years. Yeah. Um, where, where are we at now? Yeah, so I mean, a couple things. One, we've joined forces with a lot of other open source networking projects to form the LF uh, networking umbrella. Um, so we're kind of focusing even more on working with some of the other projects. Um, a lot of what we're doing uh, these days is um, kind of, I think, relatively DevOps oriented. So um, we've been doing a lot of work to connect our continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines uh, to a lot of other projects. We had a two-day workshop this weekend where OpenStack, the Cloud Native um, Foundation, um, OPNFE, Open Daylight, FDIO, and ONAP uh, basically brought the release engineer and their integration teams together to actually really start figuring out how we start kind of continuously you know, sort of delivering across all of those projects. So um, that's kind of exciting. Um, uh, you know, we're also kind of looking at you know, how we might want to retool our release process to align with that kind of delivery even more. I know we're hearing service providers want to be even more agile in the way that they're deploying software to the network. So, um, so they want to be even more agile and yes. even faster. Yes. That's encouraging, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's great. Um, you know, and we're also doing some, some great work. We just uh, launched a CRAN um, project as well. So, you know, kind of getting into the, you know, those 5G use cases and making sure kind of the, the network and the open source software underpinning the network is going to be ready to handle that. And I guess finally, we also uh, recently signed a partnership with the Open Compute Project, which is an open source hardware um, organization. And um, what's the rationale behind that? Um, Basically, uh, they're doing a lot of really good work around open sourcing um, what they call vanity-free hardware, which is sort of the continued evolution you know, towards you know, white box and even further, and taking an open source mindset there. And so we want to make sure that you know, from kind of tip to top, you can have really kind of your, your infrastructure and your back end be built um, kind of by the community in, in open source. Now you mentioned um, the fact that OPNFV is now part of the LF networking umbrella, if you, if you like. Um, can you explain the structure? Because it, it can be a little bit daunting just to, to, to work out where the projects are and, yeah. and how they all fit together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so kind of structurally as a project, we have sort of one membership, one governing board for all of those projects. And then um, within the technical projects, we have a technical advisory council that sort of helps facilitate collaboration um, and kind of is the glue in between the technical projects and the board and then we have the individual projects um, under, underneath. How is it um, working with the uh, tr more traditional standards based community because uh, we know that NFE through, through Etsy's um, ISG, yep. we're five or six years into that now right. aren't we? Yeah. You know, it's great. We actually we are planning to do a joint um, co-located plug test with Etsy, uh, Plugfest, OPNFE Plugfest, Etsy Plug Test, um, hosted by them and Sophia and Timbalis actually this year, right. uh, this summer in June. So sign up for that. <laughs> so, but are you pleased with the, um, the the rate of progress? Is is is, yeah. is, is, is the momentum you know? building sufficiently? Yeah, 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 no, it is. I mean, we're solving really hard problems, you know, and certainly, you know, when we started, you know, a couple of years ago, the focus was very truly VM-based. You know, now we're, you know, kind of beginning to look at cloud-native um, architectures that are, you know, more Kubernetes container-oriented, um, different types of networking in cloud-native, um, things like service meshes. So it's like, we were sort of, in a fairly fast train in a fast process, you know, laying the track as we were going towards our destination, and you know, and now there are also some additional kind of technology, uh, you know, technologies coming in and, and figuring out how those coexist with the even real legacy stuff and kind of you know how we want to approach applications going forward is uh, you know, an, an interesting challenge. Sure, and, and as, you, as as you evolve how you you, you, you approach. Yeah. Um, the development of OPNFV. Okay. How much influences are the, are the telcos? Because the telcos are now more vocal about what, yeah. what they what they need. So yeah. is, is that more sh shaping your, your, your thinking more? Yeah, I mean, we've always you know, had good um, involvement from our end users. But one of the things that we did this week is we actually um, kicked off an end user advisory group for the LF networking fund. So it's, uh, you know, it's 
the evolution of the OPNFE inducer group and, OP, uh, and Open Daylights inducer group. Um, we had a great session to figure out you know, how we can you know, really do a good job of kind of getting information from them and meeting their needs. And a final question, what can we expect to see and hear from OPNFE in the, in the year ahead? Yeah, so um, we are working on expanding our compliance program now that we are in uh, LFN to focus on more parts of the overall system. Um, we've got our upcoming freezer release that will be happening. You mentioned the plug test. Um, uh, and we're, you know, we're bringing in a lot of the test automation and the, the sort of tests that we've done um, and making them and our lab as a service sort of concept available to the rest of the community. So, you know, really a lot of what we're doing is really trying to help serve the, the entire community so that all of the sort of code pieces that are there um, can work even better in concert and they're not having to reinvent wheels so they can actually move faster and, and focus on you know, their areas of expertise. Heather, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome, Guy.